There is a special guest on today's episode of Believe in Steelers, but before we get to him, let's pay the bills. Today's episode of the Believe in Steelers show is brought to you by betonline.ag. NBA Finals matchup is set between Celtics and Mavericks. Hockey playoffs are in full swing. If you want to place a bet on any of the sports action, betonline.ag is the place to do it. Head over to the website today. To get in on the action, use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. You can see that on your screen right now to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, the game starts here. Today's episode of Believe in Steelers is also brought to you by Millen. Millen.com has really, really cool California style hats. I've got mine right here. Wear it to the grocery store. You can wear it on the golf course. If you hike, if you need to go to the farmer's market, you'll get complimented. And you can go to melon.com right now. Use our promo code STEALERS to receive 30% off your order over at melon.com. Welcome to the Believe in Steelers show. My name is Mark Birkin. Very, very excited to be joined by today's guest. He is Matt Shapiro of the NFL. And Matt, welcome into the show. I'm bringing in your super right now. And before we get into the draft, you are the NFL's VP of Event Strategy and Integration. What I wanted to ask you before we talk draft and Steelers and Pittsburgh and all of this, how did you get to do what you're doing right now at this moment in time? Um, yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. Really excited to be here. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Um, I've actually worked at the NFL for, for quite a while. It was uh, the first place I worked right after, after graduating college. I've had Probably about eight different jobs here at the league. I started off um, as a as a temp sort of intern level guy in our PR department and and uh, community relations and and have moved around since then. So I've been really fortunate. Had a lot of great mentors. Had a lot of great opportunities. Um, have worked across marketing and sponsorship and events and some stadium efforts and international. So um, I'm really uh, I'm really honored to have the role that I have. Yeah, absolutely. What does a day to day look like for you with your role over at the NFL? I was trying to look a little bit at your LinkedIn profile. I know you've been there for about a decade now. Yeah, I've been here for a while. Um, what I really like about my job is that it's pretty varied. So uh, I work on, um, you know, U.S. domestic location strategies where we're bringing the draft or we're bringing the Super Bowl, how the Pro Bowl games are evolving or the combine or, or kickoff or whatever it might be. And then also um, increasingly on our international um, efforts, you know, our announcement around the game in Sao Paulo that's coming up or or Madrid and kind of what that strategy looks like globally. So I work on, on those pieces. And then um, I also work really closely with a lot of our clubs um, on their stadium efforts on the as they're thinking about new stadiums or, or innovations and renovations around existing stadiums. So my day can be pretty varied. Um, a lot of meetings, a lot of emails, a lot of Zoom calls, um, but a really uh, exciting role overall. All right. So this was like the NFL's worst kept secret, if you will, because we heard rumblings in February that Pittsburgh could host the draft. Pittsburgh submits its bid for 2026 and 2027. We found out just the other week that Pittsburgh will actually host the NFL draft now in 2026. When that becomes official, what is your reaction? What is your role? How does that impact you and what this means for the league moving forward? Yeah, um, Pittsburgh has been a, a great partner um, as we've thought about this event for a number of years. As, as you can imagine, it doesn't just sort of happen overnight. Um, so it's, it, it, it's a process that often involves a number of different clubs. And that process really begins um, often years in advance. Every, every year we send out something called our kind of expression of interest to all 32 clubs that um, elicits that that interest on on all NFL events. So what, you know, if a club wants to host the Super Bowl or the draft or or the combine increasingly, the, the Pro Bowl games, just gives us a sense of what the landscape looks like um, uh, across the board. And Pittsburgh had been one of the clubs that expressed that interest. So um, from there, we kind of start looking through that and parsing through what what their vision might be, what a proposal might be, um, and, and Pittsburgh's really started to stand out. So um, my role on that with, with many other very talented people here at, at the league is to work closely with Visit Pittsburgh and the Steelers and all of the local authorities to kind of help them bring that vision to life. And then I try to help articulate that vision um, to our our executive leadership here, our um, fan engagement major events committee, which is made up of, of presidents and owners, and then ultimately presenting that vision um, to full full ownership uh, at the spring meeting, which we did a few weeks ago in Nashville. So it's a it's a pretty long process, involves a lot of people, and uh, 
really excited about uh, the vision that Pittsburgh put forth and what we'll have ahead of us over the next couple of years. All right. You said something in there that really stuck out to me, Matthew, and we'll go all in on Pittsburgh and the draft and everything. Pittsburgh is now one of several cities to have hosted the draft. It's been all over. I think Chicago had it back to back years, and then it's been traveling pretty much every year since then. Uh, you mentioned the combine. The combine has traditionally been held in Indianapolis. Is that something that the league is looking into to say, hey, what if we hosted the NFL combine in other cities? Yeah, it's certainly among the many events that we're always thinking about how to evolve. Indy has been and still is an incredible host. Um, it's a really unique event, probably different than our other events in many ways in terms of the, the logistics and infrastructure that are required from a you know indoor stadium to a really robust medical um, sort of complex. And, and I think everyone really enjoys the walkability. Our partners at Visit Indy are incredible, uh, fantastic partners, and we're looking forward to going back there. Um, but like many of the things that we do, we're, it's our, also our responsibility to kind of think about the future and make sure that we know all of our options. So perhaps more to come on that one, but, but right now we're, we're excited to be partnered with Indy. Hey, you mentioned the walkability. It was my first time this past year. The walkability to the St. Elmo Steakhouse is, <laughs> is prime. That is uh, <laughs> certainly a tradition for many yeah. tied to the combine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, in Pittsburgh, a thing I wanted to ask you about, Matt, Matthew, with hosting the NFL drafts, what's something that the average fan or the typical person doesn't know that it requires in terms of the criteria, the planning, and the logistical challenges that goes into hosting a big-time event like the NFL draft? Sure. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of, of answers to that question. One that always sticks out to me is I think – people who tune in don't necessarily know the magnitude of even the structures that they're seeing. Um, in many cases, I mean, Detroit's the most recent example. That that theater that, that you tune in and see on TV was sort of an open air parking lot, um, you know, weeks before we, we were there. So we are building essentially temporary structures that, that look like, you know, massive buildings. Um, that's happening for weeks in advance. We have great partners and vendors who are there, you know, building that from, again, probably, you know, mid-March, uh, late March on site, kind of step-by-step -step building that out. So I think that has also enabled us to get really creative with the draft. We're not bound by, you know, a, a theater or an existing mm. uh, building. We're able to go to Lower Broadway in Nashville or to Grant Park in Chicago or the, you know, the Benjamin Franklin Turnpike uh, in Philly or, you know, downtown in, in Detroit at Campus Marshes Park and kind of build these really unique things that help to highlight the iconic pieces of cities. And I think fans, uh, may not know that, which, which is okay. We, we, we want fans to just tune in and, and enjoy the show. Uh, but there's a ton of work that goes on behind the scenes to get us to that, to that moment of those three days on TV. You just described the backdrop of a lot of the great cities that have NFL franchises. I expect nothing different with Pittsburgh. You get the banks of the three rivers, the Pittsburgh skylines and that proximity. I mean, whether you're at what used to be Heinz field, now Acrisure stadium, uh, the PNC park over by where the Pittsburgh pirates play as well. You get a fantastic backdrop. And I mean, the skyline does the work for you in terms of what you need in terms of, you, you know, you watch on TV a lot. It's like, well, here's the aerial shot and it's just absolutely yep. stunning. It's beautiful. Yeah. And that, that's a huge piece of that sort of initial vision that we ask each city and club to provide for us. Kind of where, where do you see this happening and how do we, how do we make your city a unique character in the overall draft. And I think you just laid out a lot of the the types of things that that Pittsburgh and the Steelers articulated, which is um, you know the the stadium, Point State Park, the iconic skyline, the bridges, right? All the things that you know are the pieces that we now with our local partners are going to start putting in place over the next couple of years. We're not ready today to say, here's where the stage will be, or here's exactly where fans will be. That's that's something that we'll work through collaboratively with, with them um, over the coming months and ultimately years. But all the pieces are in place to make this a really iconic draft. How does the NFL work with not just the cities, but I also think that when the draft is held at the end of April, you're very early on into the Major League Baseball Stadium. Is this something where I would imagine, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I would imagine that hopefully with Major League Baseball, the Pirates can be on the road while a large scale event like the draft is hosted in Pittsburgh. It's probably going to be the biggest event 
possibly in city history. I mean, maybe yeah. other than a Super Bowl victory parade. Mm-hmm. How do you work with all the different partners, Major League Baseball included? Yeah, I mean, I think we we lean heavily on our local partners who have great relationships with all those teams. Certainly the Steelers have a relationship with the Pirates and Alliance with with the the Tigers. There actually were a couple of baseball games this year, I think on Friday and Saturday in downtown Detroit. And we we navigated those. Um, you know, there's there's also opportunities when there's more action sort of in, mm. a, in a downtown area, obviously incredibly mindful of public resources and, and police and traffic and all those things. And we'll work very much hand in hand with with those groups. Um, but there again, the sort of positive side is that of that is more excitement, more buzz downtown, more fans who can who can perhaps participate in both things, especially on a Saturday, maybe. So we'll work hand in hand with, um, you know, visit Pittsburgh and the Steelers and, and others to make sure that everything runs smoothly downtown. All right. I'm assuming you've been to Pittsburgh before. And I, if you have, yeah. I hope you've had uh, the Primanti Brothers sandwiches already, Matthew. Of course. Of course. That's a that that's a key part of any visit. Um, I've, I've had one, I think I had one at a pirates game many years ago. I think I had one at the airport and I think I've actually had one downtown. So I've, I've covered my Permanente's bases, but looking forward to more to come. I am very much an adopted Yinzer myself. Okay. And the first time I'm like, what do you mean? You know, French fries and coleslaw <laughs> and a sandwich, but it's like when in Rome, it's, 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 it's fantastic. Take a bite and you, you understand it. Fantastic. Sure. Um, so how did Pittsburgh emerge as the candidate for 2026? I also read that Denver was in consideration. Why Pittsburgh specifically for 2026 compared to some of the other cities that were also vying to host the draft? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I would say for those other cities who maybe aren't hosting in 2026, our plan is to continue you know, bringing this draft on the road. So I, I could certainly see some of the other cities who you've heard rumored or heard out there as completely viable candidates over the next few years. So um, nothing against those cities. I think, like we said, though, Pittsburgh put forth just a really strong vision, they, the the locations and, and frankly, the the partnerships, which are always key. Visit Pittsburgh and their leadership, um, the Steelers, the Rooney family. Everyone was just um, very clearly all in on on wanting to make this draft in 2026 a reality. And that showed in their in their bid vision, it showed in their proposal, it showed in their ability to pull together so many different groups within Pittsburgh to kind of show us uh, what, what that vision would look like and give everyone here the confidence that this will be um, a fantastic event. So um, they were just, uh, they put forth a, a great a great proposal and um, our, our ownership groups uh, agreed. Is it the same thing for 2027, some of the same characteristics that you're looking for? Because Pittsburgh also put in a bid for 2027. Yep. Uh, you've got, again, Denver was a finalist for 26. Reading headlines, too, that Washington, D.C. is also vying to host the 2027 draft. Yep. Is it those same types of criteria that the league looks for regardless of the year? For sure. Um, I, I think that those core characteristics are always there, right? Vision for the event, local partnerships, impact that w- we'd be able to make on the club, right? I think it's really important to think about um, the priorities of our of our local clubs and which year might make most sense for um, driving certain business initiatives is always an important factor. Uh, I think uh, kind of proximity to other fan bases, although I know, you know, it may be difficult for Steelers fans, just like it was for Lions fans. You're going to, you're going to see Ravens fans. You're going to see Bengals fans. You're going to see Browns fans. And that's kind of the, the point. Um, as much as that that might hurt, I'm sure it will be you know black and yellow primarily. But there there is something about this event that's really special, and we know that cities actually have embraced that, right? It's 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 okay to see your your rivals on draft night. Everyone gets better. It's a it's a good day for everyone. So proximity to other NFL clubs, and frankly, college fandom is also a really interesting mm-hmm. one because when, when you think about what the draft is, it's the exact coming together of of college and the NFL. So we also um, you know, definitely hear that in in cities proposals of what the sort of drivability is, not just to other NFL markets, but some some big college markets as well. Clearly, this past year was a pretty unique moment with Michigan uh, and the Lions, and and we certainly uh, took advantage of that in a good way and 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 really played that up. So those factors, and then the more sort of um, operational but crucial factors of hotels, venues, you know, availability. All of those things also play a factor. 
I used to love as a kid watching when it was at Radio City Music Call and it was like the sky's blue, the grass is green and the Jets fans are going to boo whichever <laughs> pick they take. Sure. I used to always love that as a kid. But then when the draft started traveling, I had friends and family attend in Chicago and in Kansas City. And you got yep. to see it as this big time event, this showcase event of the next generation of NFL stars. And it might be someone from even a smaller school who you might not be familiar with their names in rounds two, round three, round four. Yep. Then you look back at that moment and it was like, holy cow, I was there when sure. my team selected this player. And I remember being there at that moment and be able to get to experience that with a lot of uh, the family friendly events as well, I think is just a special, special showcase, not just for the league, but for the city itself. And okay. I really saw this come to fruition too. A good buddy of mine worked in Nashville, Tennessee. I saw the fans flood Broadway. I mean, it was just like, it was just a sea of NFL fans. So to see that scale, I, I always thought it should always be in New York City. And then once they started traveling, it was like, we can make this a big time event on the road. Like almost like ESPN's college game day, almost kind of sure. like that, but you can do it over the span of three days. Yeah, for sure. And I think um, that first year in Chicago was kind of that revelation for a lot of people, you know, day three, especially, I think, where for many years, you know, that that Saturday or Sunday, depending on, on what the format was, was kind of a, a sleepy day at Radio City, right? It was there was not a ton going on, frankly, on the stage in the theater. The fans who were in that venue were the most avid fans. And obviously, we, we love those fans, the ones who were there tracking every pick and, and wanting to see who gets selected in around six and seven. Um, but it was a relatively limited crowd. Whereas when you get to Grant Park in Chicago on day three and you look around and see families and, and people kicking field goals and music and food and the ability to turn the draft into something more than simply the player selection. And certainly no doubt the player selection is at the core of all of this and something we never take our eye off of, but the ability to turn this really into a celebration of football um, at all levels and a celebration of the city. We, we've really pulled in a lot of sort of cultural elements of that city, whether it's the kind of food of Detroit or the music of Detroit and same for Kansas City and others, and no doubt will, will be the same for Pittsburgh. So that day three is also a really special one where you know the theater would have always been packed on Thursday and Friday at Radio City, but there's something about that third day where we're just total festival, of course, focus still on the players being selected. That's the most important, but just, you know, again, the the music, the throwing, a, running the 40, kicking the field goal, getting the autograph, eating the food, you know, doing all the things to just sort of celebrate our fans and, and the city. Absolutely. Matthew, is there anything I haven't been smart enough to ask you about, about Pittsburgh hosting the 2026 draft? This has been an absolute pleasure. No, I think you're very smart about Pittsburgh hosting the 2026 draft. I think all of this uh, makes sense. And we're, we're just so excited to be there. The, the, the bar has been raised by uh, by our friends in Detroit with uh, oh, you know their, their attendance numbers and um, you know every city uh, is confident that they'll be able to do that. So um, you know we're excited about it. We also got we've got Green Bay um, on our mind, but before we before we head to Pittsburgh, so we'll we'll certainly learn more um, with our with our partners in the Packers and and Green Bay and um, ideally kind of utilizing Lambeau Field in a really interesting way and another year of learnings and and then we'll will be your way to hopefully raise the bar even further in 2026. Yeah, a lot of exciting stuff ahead. And then we'll see what happens in 2027 as well. Um, any word, I'll leave you with this, any word on when the league is expected to announce when the 2027 draft will be held? We're still going to leave that uh, a little bit open as we work through it. I would say, you know, we've traditionally not wanted to get past the kind of two year in advance mark, which right. you, you see here is kind of what, what we just got up against. So, you know, certainly within the next year, our goal will be to announce uh, 2027. He is Matthew Shapiro, National Football League VP of Event Strategy and Integration. Matthew, thank you for your time this afternoon or this morning, I should say. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate you having me on. For our guest, Matthew Shapiro, I'm Mark Bergen. Thank you for watching another episode of the Believe in Steelers show. Apple and Spotify, please leave us a five-star review. And on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next week. Till then, take care. So long, everybody.